In a previous video, we looked at the ideal number formats for accounting and finance. And in every one of those examples, we applied our custom number format to the cell. But there's another way that we can use these custom number formats, and that's inside the text function so that we can create dynamic sentences and contextual headings. And that's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. So let's start by looking at a simple example. To work along with this video, please download the example file and you'll find links in the descriptions box below. Now let's say that we wanted to write a sentence that included a number. We might write equals and then open double quote, training costs for September were, then we might concatenate with the number 5,000. And then after that, we might then include a closing full stop. So that creates a sentence that says training costs for September were 5,000. But that 5,000 isn't formatted in a particularly useful way. Instead, what we can do is use the text function. So we can use text, we'll reference that same cell, and in here we can apply a custom number format. And this is supplied within double quotes. I'll enter a dollar symbol or whatever currency symbol you want to use and enter hash, comma, hash, hash, zero. And then I will close that double quote and then close the text function. When I press return, you can see that the training costs for September were, and it clearly shows that it's now $5,000 and it has that thousand separator. So while the information contained in these two cells is exactly the same, Adding that currency symbol and the thousand separator makes it much easier for others to read. In this example, we have four values, a positive value, a negative value, a zero value, and a text value. And over here in column D, we've taken those numbers and we've then formatted them using a custom number format. I'll press control one to display that custom number format. And that's the format that has been applied. Now, if you want to understand what this code means, please check out our previous video and there'll be a link on the screen for you to go and view that. Now, if we take this number format, so this number format here, we can use it inside the text function. So here's the number format that we had. And if I double click on this formula here, you can see that we're taking the value in C6 and then applying the number format that's contained in cell C2. Finally, in column F, we then have a sentence that combines all of this together. Now, the key thing here is to look at the differences between the cell format and the text format. And is that output what we want to see? To start with, let's look at the text element. Ignore the fact that this sentence doesn't make any sense, but look at the format of what's there. So there is text. Then we have a double space. And this double space is created by the space which is contained inside the formula, but also our custom number format forces in white space. Therefore, if we want to use a custom number format for text, we really don't want that white space. And actually, because we're working with text, that fourth section in our custom number format serves no purpose. So we can take that out entirely. Okay, so now the spacing on this looks accurate. Now let's look at our zero number format. So in a cell format, we get a dash and a white space next to it. But if we want to use this inside a text function, we get the words there is, we then get the dash, and there's also some white space before it then says variance to last month. Now again, that formatting isn't great because we have that additional white space. So we can take that off our number format but also, if we have a zero, do we want to display a dash or do we want to display a zero? I would suggest that in a sentence, we probably want to display a zero. So therefore, we can take away that section of our custom number format. We'll accept that. And now it says there is zero variance to last month. There's still a space in that. And that's because it's applying the default number format, which is in that first position. And we'll deal with that in a few moments time. The next cell number format you can see is in red, but when we use this with the text function, that formatting does not come through. So let's come back to our custom number format and let's remove the words red because it doesn't format our text. Okay, we've taken that out because it served no purpose. 
but also because we're thinking about text here, you can see that we have this additional white space between the number and the word variance. And that's because our default number format in position one, again, has an extra piece of white space to take the bracket into account. But let's take that away. And we now have a simpler number format, which is perfect for working with the text function. Because our custom number format is just a text string, it means that we can use a cell length value as we saw in the previous section. So here we're looking up cell C7 and we're using cell C2 as our text format. But because it is text, it means we can enter that as a hard coded value into our function. Now, normally we advise against using hard coded values in cells, but remember, this isn't actually a number, it's just a formatting string. So therefore, if you were to use a hard coded value in this way, I think that is an acceptable usage. But if you disagree with me on that, that's absolutely fine. You can always use that cell linked version. But there are some slight formatting differences depending on whether we're using a cell linked or a hard coded value. For example, if we wanted to display these numbers in one decimal place millions, you might insert the dollar symbol, have hash comma hash hash naught point naught. Then we might enter two commas because we want to display this in millions. And then we can enter slash M. Now let's do the same to the negative number format. So dollar hash comma hash hash naught point naught comma comma slash M. I'll press return on that. And now you can see that we have 1.2 million or 0.0 million displayed in our cells. Now we can take this number format. I'll just copy that and let's paste it as our hard coded number format. We can enter that. We copy that down and that now formats everything in exactly the same way. But often people don't use this slash method. Instead, they'll put the M within double quotes. And for the cell linked value, that works perfectly well. But if we take this text, and try and paste it into our hard coded version, you'll see that that creates an error. And that's because the double quote is used as the opening of our text string, which means we need to use escape characters before each of our double quote characters that we want to retain in our custom number format. And the escape character for a double quote is another double quote. So let's enter these. And now that number format should be acceptable. Let's drag that down to show that that works. When we start to use double quotes in this way, it can become a little bit confusing to read. So often what people might use instead is the char function. So equals char, and that's char 34, will give us a double quote character. So therefore we could use that function and concatenate this entire piece into a single string but I won't demonstrate that here. We've got a blog post about how we can use double quotes in Excel formulas, and there'll be a link in the descriptions box below. So we can create number formats that are cell linked or hard coded. We just need to be aware of the quirks around using that double quote character. Often, if we're trying to create dynamic text, we might want to state whether a number is favorable or adverse, or whether something is maybe a profit or a loss. Let's take a look at an example here. In cell F6, I have a formula. And that formula is, there is a, and then I want to have the words favorable or adverse in cell E6, variance of, and we then pick up the value in D6 to last month. So if it said favorable, it would say there is a favorable variance of 1.2 to last month. And equally, if it were negative, it would say adverse. For this, we would often use an if function. So equals if, so if our number is bigger than or equal to naught, it will display the words favorable, or it would display the word adverse. So when we drag that down, you can see that those sentences now make sense. However, we don't need to use an if function for this. Instead, we can use a custom number format. The first section of our custom number format is what's displayed if a number is positive. 
So we could use the word favorable. The next section is if the number is negative. So we could use the word adverse. So there, favorable and adverse are both contained within double quotes, and there is a semicolon that separates those two words, which means we can use the text function. So the text of the number, and then use our custom number format. So now that displays favorable. Add some dollars to this, and then let's drag it down. So we have the word favorable or adverse appearing in our cell, and that's not driven by a function, that's driven by the custom number format. Let's suggest we want to apply the same method but using a hard-coded value. And to copy that text, come down here, equals text, open bracket, I'll select the number, enter a comma, and then paste that number format. I'll close the bracket, I'll press return, and again, we get that formula error. And that's because we haven't wrapped our custom number format in double quotes. So let's do that. But then we also need to add in the escape characters. So we'll add another one in there, another one at the end, and also we need escape characters in the middle, either side of the semicolon. And press return on that, and that now displays the correct value. As you can see, these double quotes are getting out of control, but hopefully the thought process of having the value then having to wrap it in double quotes and then adding the escape characters shows you why there are so many double quotes in that function. And if we copy this down, you can see that that then creates our formula correctly. If you're thinking about using the char function as an alternative, I've included that there. So you can see that we're using char to represent a double quote and therefore we have to create a reasonable size text string. So again, working with double quotes inside a text string can become quite confusing, whether you're using double quotes as escape characters or whether you're using the char method. Well, that's it. That's how we can use custom number formats inside the text function to create dynamic sentences and headings to use in our reports. The only thing we really need to be careful of is if we're using that hard-coded method about how we use those double quote characters. If you like this video and you like what we teach, why not head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and check out our training program. We'd love to have you in there. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.